Hi there guys, uh, okay, so we are gonna do another tutorial today, uh, whatever the day you're living in because this is recorded. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do a tutorial about how to automate a captive portal. Uh, that is uh, with SAP, SAP Proxy, it's a utility program that can be used in Linux, probably I think Windows and MacOS, probably. Um, yeah, uh, just uh, introducing it a little bit. So, well, oh, I'm going to spend you now, you know, with pen and paper as always, but just uh, a little bit what I found. First of all, you know, I wanted to do this because um, I wanted to connect my uh, Raspberry Pi to the uh, to a Wi-Fi, a public Wi-Fi. And uh, yeah, it was a SSH, SSH chain to the SSH chain to the um, to a Raspberry Pi. And I was not running X server on the uh, Raspberry Pi, so I couldn't really... Um, you know, go through the captive portal with all the JavaScript and whatever, you know, the browser. Uh, so I needed to uh, a way to automate it with a console, with a terminal. And I've been asking on channels like a networking channel in the IRC Libera. And yeah, I found like many people, you know, they don't like this because they are network uh, administrators and they don't like someone fiddling with these things. Um, in this example, in this tutorial, I'm going to use uh, a proper one. Uh, I don't know if it's legal or not. The purpose is totally um, totally legal, totally legit. You know, there is no no will of uh, wanting to hack anything, you know, get any, any, any data or anything from any company. And I don't think by automating this, you can actually get any data. Although the tools you might learn, you know, they by analogy you can use them maybe for other purposes, but that's like everything in this life. If you know how to, they teach you how to hold your hands something, you can hold a knife, you know, but we're teaching you how to hold a ball to play football. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna go now into the, um, a little bit the theoretical explanation of what we're gonna do. Sub proxy, a uh, really nice tool. Another thing with SAP Proxy, yeah, really nice tool. I love it. Obviously, it's open source, uh, free software. Really nice. It just um, a little things, you know, we can always criticize. Uh, I'm going to try to be faster. Yeah, it's a GUI program. So if you are really into, like, hacking into, you know, doing this system administration and stuff, um, yeah, you should use the console. So I don't really like these programs in general. You know, I prefer to use like uh, raw commands. But yeah, as much as it, as it helps automate these things or more, more of when you're using a browser and you have to click in here, there, you know, uh, it's it's quite so it's quite okay. It's quite it's quite useful the program. It can be improved, you know, in many ways. You know, like it's so slow, you know, to work in a GUI. It's so that's the problem with GUIs. It's always gonna be way 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 slower but it's actually a really good program i just need to say thanks to the developers you know as always you know creating these tools for free for everyone like us i don't know what where we are living but it's really good you know so thank you very much guys uh well we're, we're gonna now for the theoretical explanation okay so we continue with this uh, the requirements we're gonna need is yes, Linux, so maybe Windows and stuff, but probably Linux is better. SAP proxy, uh, the program, you can download it on their website and follow those instructions. So you need a browser as well, like Firefox or Chrome, I think it works with SAP proxy. SAP proxy. And then curl, well, it's always good to know this one. Uh, well, it comes with Linux. So yeah, yeah, a little bit of um, the theory behind this. So basically a captive portal is when you are trying to connect uh, to internet uh, with an, in a in a wireless IP AP. Well, it doesn't have to be wireless, you know, but in a LAN that requires you to authenticate to log in on their system. So basically, the first request you do to, for example, that uh, you want to access, uh, say, Google, for example, um, it will be. It will go. It will be intercepted. So uh, somehow, you know, there are many ways. Like probably through DNS uh, protocol, but it will be intercepted by um, local web browser, uh, web server. Sorry, uh, that request, and uh, they it will give you uh, a response 
uh, for, with this uh, login process with the captive portal that you need to uh, fill all this form in order to authentify and once uh, you are successful with this process uh, you will go directly through the AP and uh, yeah, you will be allowed to connect to the internet okay so sub proxy how does it work um, basically is like a man in the middle uh, sort of program in between the browser and the web server so it intercepts all the requests that you do uh, through the browser you know to the web server and it uh, intercepts as well the the responses uh, it will be um, it's inter intercept them it records them and you can mangle them as well you can uh, change those responses you can change all those requests you know according to scripts that you can do you can do many things like that you know or you can just go plain you know and you just record the whatever the communication you go with a web server is uh, it's a pretty useful pretty useful program to actually understand that uh, layer 7 protocol uh, communication process which is http protocol sorry a little bit for the messing here let's go by parts um, yeah, in a nutshell, HTTP protocol is a uh, layer 7 uh, networking protocol. Um, its uh, current state is uh, HTTP 2, uh, made on 2015. And the main feature of this is that it's uh, stateless, you know. So that means that um, it just uh, goes, it goes through TCP. TCP normally port 80 and 443, the encrypted one. So every communication is a little bit like a walkie-talkie. You know, you well, no, it's like, yeah, you get you get a request. You send a request to the server. Sorry, just see this one. You send a request and you get a response, and then back again, back again, but new ones. So it's a stateless, meaning that a new requests. Uh, are gonna be separated in, in in a new in a new communication process. Was uh, this implies that it's a big limitation, but the workaround uh, for this, you know, for example, if you use uh, Facebook or whatever the tool on the web uh, on the web browser, you are you are actually able to log in into your system into your own account. And uh, how does it, how does it work? You know, because basically I, I said this is a stateless. Well, so really simple. Uh, there are some parts of the there are parts that keeps track parts of the communication process that keeps track of the session, meaning the cookies. These cookies um, they keep track. They give you like a code, a unique code that you store in a secret file. The cookies, the cookie jar, and uh, and this will keep track. Uh, for the server and the browser that is the same communication process and it's like a little bit like a like an ID you know token is uh, kind of the concept I think yeah. so well mainly it works through two ways you know uh, requests and responses you know you always get a response uh, after a request as long as there is a connection in between them so the requests are uh, two types of requests, either GET or POST requests. Uh, GET requests, they are the ones who have the information, all the information in the URL. Like, uh, say that you are searching on Google, and uh, you search for, uh, let's say, you know, birds, yeah, or Google images, you know. So it will be Google, uh, something encoding, you know, in a uh, URL. And uh, then you'll see birds on the actual URL, you know. So that's uh, how it works. They, they get uh, they get kind of request. Whereas the pro the the post ones, they got the request. It goes the request information. It goes through the body, you know. Because well, we need to understand that uh, mainly all these messages, either requests or responses. I didn't put it in here, but it's made of headers and the actual body you know, the body is mainly so the headers is uh, the title and many things like cookies the encoding and stuff whereas it's like metadata we can say whereas the body 
mostly it is important the body on the responses the body is uh, is the html code with php well with php you know because that's parsed by the server but with uh, javascript as well css all this stuff okay responses you know uh, this is just in a nutshell and as i'm telling you you know like you should if you're interested about this you should check this yourself guys but you got uh, uh classified five kinds of uh, five groups of responses and you get more you know you get like one zero zero something but like uh, functionally they go they are categorized in uh, these five types the one of 100 it will be informational the 200 ones it will be a successful uh, connection in between per peers between the the um, the client and the server 300 it will be a redirection 400 it will be a client error and 500 will mean server error um yeah, let's see let me yeah let, let's check how for example yeah in this uh, program i'm gonna show you now in a proper way uh we get in here we are a proxy in you can see on there this is the history basically of uh communication process um we go of a login that i did already uh, we can see all these gets it call it, it, it records it through gets and then you can browse them and check the actual request and for each you get a response as well this is a request so be you know, those are the headers normally request is all headers and then you know response in here like yeah, we can see it separated like this. You know this is uh, the headers, you know the response, and the actual code. Um, yeah, well you can see that's a communication process. Let's check the history. This is oops. Well we're gonna go into. Oops, sorry about that. We, we're gonna we're gonna go to see this properly recorded on the screen on the computer. So let's go for it. Okay, guys. So let's um, yeah. Let's try to be quick. Uh, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna do this video like uh, no edition, no anything. So like you just uh, we're gonna try to be fast on doing the things. But if you if you like just fast forward things, whatever. Okay, so we need to open SAP, yeah? We open SAP on there, we got SAP on there. Okay, I'll put my face in here. Probably sometimes we won't see the face. Okay, we got SAP. Now I'm connected already to this uh, Wi-Fi. And uh, this uh, we work guest. Uh, I'm gonna, because I'm already registered on this, you know, I'm gonna make it force me to authenticate uh, yet again. So I'm going to need to change my MAC address. That's a little trick. Okay, so I normally, as you can see, I normally use this kind of a notepads in here. Uh, oops. Okay, let's uh, use this, for example. Okay, so this has also restarted the network manager. Now, should be yeah it's asking me on there you see open uh, open network login page okay cool but we're gonna do it with sap so we're in sap uh got so many different ways of uh, different layouts in here let's check we need to find them get started this one quick start yeah Manual Explore. I just uh, pop into any website like uh, Luke Smith, for example. Um, yeah, Let's launch a browser. You will launch um, browser, or this browser is gonna be as you see, like sapped. We can say like it's the proxy. So in this one, all that you perform in this browser is gonna be recorded to. In the in the proxy, okay. Accept. Swipe 
perform confirmation. Okay, in, the, in this uh, this captive portal, it basically sends you a confirmation via email, which I will need to. I will need to accept now. If I have 15 minutes of internet, that I I can accept that. I need to accept that. It will disconnect me otherwise. Gonna try to crack on and show you whatever happened in here. Um, okay, yeah. So basically, we recorded all that happened in here. We we recorded all the requests and responses in here. Uh, tabs of interest history yeah we get to history Ooh, things happening in here loads uh, there is a lot of uh, gibberish in here lot of uh, rubbish we are gonna try to focus on what we really need so this is the history in this view of uh, just one uh, window let me make my face a little bit smaller okay I wanna see requests and responses gonna be a little bit tight in here yeah okay so first this one is the interest yeah the Luke Smith we try to get it and some sort of like website it intercepted this and gave us uh, another link that we needed to pop in and it did it automatically. I don't know exactly the function on this on the browser, but yes, it works. Okay, so it sub for sub proxy is got oh, it's got a really really nice feature, which is uh, as add to test scripts script. This one is uh, what we were gonna gonna be looking at. Um, yeah, we're gonna need to add these actions to the test script. All the actions that we really want to record. Uh, we can. It's a it takes a little bit of uh, knowledge of all these processes. So we can pretty much just uh, grab all of this. If at first you don't know. Like many of the things that happened in here uh, are like pass, uh, like downloading, I don't know, images, you know, like even CSS, you know, like styling sheets and stuff. Uh, we don't need many of these ones, but as this is going to be a, a really quick one, we are going to just be extensive. Uh, new test script. Let's do a new test script. Let's call it Active Portal Two. Da 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 da. Standalone. Yeah. Standalone the script. Da 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 da. da. Don't exactly understand all of this, but hope. Might be loading now. This might be passing all this uh, orders now to the engine, and then creating the the script uh, commands. Exactly so.
where it looks like it has been added all of these orders they are there uh, all of this so this is the script already so you could perform some actions already for you a uh, sap knows understands a little bit of uh, all these things okay okay so we got this uh, we can see it's really tiny right now the um, this screen but you will understand a little bit as to the purpose of this video uh, probably just um, tell you a little bit that the functioning okay we need to analyze all of this well the script first of all yeah we got it here the script this just focus on, on this window this one these are all the all the requests that we've done um, manually with the SAP uh, browser, sort of. All the all the orders that we did manually, they are be recorded in here as orders that can be performed with this engine, with this SEST uh, scripting engine and SAP. These are orders. Um, it will try to perform the same exactly the same that you, you copy copy the headers and the bodies of all the get uh, and all the all the requests that we sent and uh, in here we can specify actions to perform in order to grab variables which are being get in, in the process of uh, re registering the whole the captive portal for example the script it obviously automates the requests but the responses are something we are we are not in control of and we're gonna try to replicate exactly the same behavior as if we were doing it naturally um the we can see we got all of this uh, URL and encoding and we need to understand a little bit what's going on in here this is the first request uh, something that we need to check in here is the client MAC address this is something that is going to change uh, depending on the request you know uh, then the different things there are different other variables that change according to whichever the um, they, they change according uh, according to where you are connecting and maybe even one that is um, according to the IP you have as well you need to check all these uh, variables it depends on the captive portal you are trying to automate um, maybe captive portals that they are just accept some form and maybe you don't even have to type anything but some others you need to be automating loads of things so for example I'm gonna do the MAC address okay so we get into here we are gonna see we are gonna create so the MAC address the MAC address is something we're gonna have to give to this script so it would be nice that we could make it automatic, but still, I still don't know that process. If I know that, that process, the um, the tutorial that I'm gonna write down for the in the description is gonna be updated. But at the moment, what we can do is pass those variables as parameters on the script, so we can add some parameters on the script. You can see in here, there's a client MAC address. And we can let's go to the, yes three a three e blah blah blah. This is the our MAC address, current MAC address right now. Yeah. So yeah, three e. That's uh, the client MAC address. We need to specify this to be. So I'm gonna call these. I'm gonna so to create a new parameter on the script, just double click on the script uh, window on the script tab in the same script, 
and then you go to the tab parameters and you add say client mac yeah call it like this value we'll see it, uh, it start with letters okay so now we are gonna go to each request that it uses this client mac and just assign put the variable on, on there instead of like making it at the moment it's static if you replicate this script it's gonna be giving always this mac address but now we're gonna make it dynamic so we double click in the request and now this is a get me a get method so it's in the url uh, and in here we go to the mac uh, no, that's probably the AP MAC address. In here, we we'll get this one. So we delete this. No problem deleting that. We right click on the mouse. Assessed uh, variable paste client MAC is this one. Yeah, it goes like this. Perfect. Okay. We need to do that for all the client Macs that we see in here. So all of the get requests, but that we're gonna we're not gonna do it in this video. I mean, I'm gonna cut that off, you know, because that's boring. That's office job. <laughs> okay, so we go, we're seeing other thing of interest. In here, we got the cookies. We got we we're gonna we're gonna go through more. Um, requests that we're gonna do that this is has been recorded um we're gonna see one that is let's see you need to basically go down a sun in this one because you cannot go by really useful stuff like you can just grab this this header of the first request see those cookies that have been set it these are the cookies I'm gonna identify the session for the browser I'm just gonna keep track of this I'll copy that I'll just uh yeah five set y and then finishing vu see if we find that in uh, other requests Oh, by the way, look, in this one is where I have to fill some form. So it's in here as well. You can you can do the same thing. You know, you can just create a variable, a parameter, and then insert it in here. Set, I like this one. Set 1k2. You know, I've seen it many times. I think that's going to be something we need to look at, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look. That's the session ID. Oh, ho, ho. I probably have done this before. I mean, I'm probably really intelligent. Okay, so da, 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 da. this one it comes from the first request, the first response to the first request. It gives us that session ID in the cookie. As you can see, that um, that code is gonna have to be uh, repeated again on the get request that we subsequently sent send on this uh, authentication process so we're gonna have to grab this and put it on them as a variable and that's being made by including a, a cest assignment and then we're gonna wanna do via string delimiters yes. 
the string delimiters variable name let's call it uh, session id and it's in the header it's in the header of the response prefix string up well in the prefix so we're gonna have to like surround the code Ooh, lost it lost it in here uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. We lost it on that. Yeah, we're gonna basically have to. Oh. Exactly know what's going on in here, but like uh, we 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 got it we got it recorded in here. Okay, so we're gonna basically have to sandwich that. See the session ID here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. So this the program is gonna be reading all of this, you know, subsequently. So we're just gonna need to surround that surround that variable with a send element string delimiter. Variable name is session ID. In the head, ta yeah. So we're gonna wanna grab this. Oop. To the equal, and then this. Uh, it's not semicolon. It's the same. Yeah. So this is basically gonna grab that uh, variable in between that and that sandwich we can say and we're gonna, it's gonna put it on a variable called session id and now anytime we come across that uh, what was the number z1k2 blah 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 we're gonna wanna sign that on the form for example in here Parra, ba, 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 ba. If you feel a little bit like overwhelmed by all these symbols and stuff, you need to understand a little bit of uh, URL encoding, uh, check some videos on there, uh, and yeah, I encourage you to do that. Uh, many more things in, it, it can be done in here, we, we might have to check. I think it's pretty much done, but I'm gonna go and polish this and then just execute it. The process is just the same, you know, I'll show you exactly what we, we have to do. So, yeah. I'm going to cut the video and then just... Okay guys, so finito by my side, you know, I finished uh, automating that and I uh, actually think it's quite successful. Um, let me check what I got. I pretty much got that. And uh, not much more. Um, so some parameters, I think uh, a couple of parameters more. So let's run the script. Mm, to in order to run the script, we need to give those parameters a value. My case is client mac, client mac uh, vain. I call it like twenty, client mac three. So different URL encodings um, I came across. Okay, so I'm gonna just put this and run the script and show you. That it works. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, yeah, let's randomize the Mac address back again. Oh, 
And now let's grab those variables. This is my new MAC address. Yeah, be careful in here like there's always when you copy paste in here for some reason there's like always like a white space or at least that was my case 20s with 20s it's some sort of, this is the same it's the basically it's the MAC address but with uh, the uh, the Colons, I think it's colon, not semicolons. The colons, they are uh, percentage. This should be percentage three A because that's the ASCII code for the for the colons. But I don't know why it's twenty. It's percentage twenty five is some other parts. You know, whatever you see on the form, just do it. You know, it's just how do you say? We're just reverse engineering this. So when you reverse engineer this, you re uh, reverse engineer stuff, you don't need to understand exactly how, you know, the purpose of everything. It's just that it works. That is the approach. Okay. Uh, it should be fine. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they, it's asking me because I randomized my my uh, I randomized my my MAC address and I disconnected. It's asking me again for the captive portal. I'm gonna run this to run a script. Yeah, I already passed the the parameters. Uh, we need to just go here. Script console. In here, I'm gonna make this big. Just one window. Oops. Script console. And run it. Uh, you see this, and it's going through. It goes assertions. By the way, these assertions. Yeah, you need to check the documentation and even the videos of, of SAP proxy, you know, to understand this better. But the assertions are basically some sort of test that SAP does uh, in order to understand that the request that you get back from the web server ha is uh, you have got the desired one. You know, there might be some, you know, you you, you might put some conditions. You know, you might want. Some sort of request. Normally, you want requests that are accepted, but sometimes you may you may want to check some strings or something on the on the response form. You can change that. You can change that. Okay, this all looks green, so it looks good. So that's pretty much good. We can see. Let's check. These are the test results. These are uh, this is the tab for the history when you apply um, a script uh, within SAP. Uh, is not uh, the history is uh, different the history is, is the history of your sub proxy browser now this is already this is what you what you perform with the automation with the script uh, we can check for example let's check let's see everything completed kind of correctly let's see the request and response whoop Yeah, so in here we did the, our MAC address and then we got the cookies assigned. It's the most important part, you know, when you see cookies in here, everything fine. Then we follow that, we follow that. And excuse for my computer, but it's a little bit laggy because of the whole recording, but let's um, see significant a significant part of the process Many, many of these uh, these requests you can 
basically delete them is doesn't look like really I'm going to need it for the thing. But yeah, this one for example, this one is go to one of the session cookies in here on the get request. It looks like everything is working, you know, set one, you know, it gives you it gives you like a two hundred that is a good response. Uh, all the CFR token, CS, ah, CSRF token, all perfect, perfect in here, sweet, let's see, yeah, now, um, let's get to Google to get tracked by the thing, okay, we get, we get on there, we get connectivity, that's working, okay, so, um, thanks very much, guys, uh, thank you, just, uh, yeah, if you like the video, just subscribe and see you again with another crazy experiment. <laughs>